It took a few million years for our ancestors to evolve into the walking, talking, texting, and blogging creatures we've become. Along the way, the human body and brain have changed a lot. In our series on evolution, The Human Edge, NPR is taking a look at those changes, in particular the ones that made us the dominant species. As NPR's Christopher Joyce explains, we couldn't have done it without our feet. Brian Richmond is a kid's soccer coach. He's also a physical anthropologist. As far as he's concerned, soccer is not just the world's most popular sport. It's the one that might just be best suited to our uniquely human strength. It would be difficult to play soccer without a foot that's constructed like ours. Um, I suppose if we had the foot of a chimpanzee, you could pick up the ball, <laughs> you know, and you could throw it. But we don't have a chimp's foot. A chimp's foot is flexible, built for grasping branches and climbing trees, like our own earliest ancestors. Our foot is stiff, taut, and springy, built for walking and running. And Richmond wants to know, how did we go from a climber's foot to this amazing human appendage? At his office at George Washington University in Washington, D.C., Richmond shows me a photograph. These footprints are the earliest footprints of early humans. A million and a half years ago, one of our ancestors left those prints in the African mud. The feet were about size nine. Richmond discovered a whole trackway of these prints. They look like the diagrams of feet that dance instructors use to show how to do the salsa or the tango. For me, and I suspect for Richmond, the prints are even more exciting to behold than a bone or a skull that old, because you can just imagine an ancient action, a living moment captured. A fossilized footprint is, is basically fossilized behavior. It shows you what that individual did one and a half million years ago at that instant in time. And what do those prints tell Richmond? Sure enough, they were walking with a long stride. They had an arch in the foot, the way we have. Long legs and an arch in our foot. Our primate cousins, gorillas, chimps, bonobos, they're flat-footed, no arch. The arch is actually the manifestation of a very complex apparatus inside our foot, an apparatus for walking like no other in the world. Okay. There we go. We're heading into the gross anatomy lab where we uh, have uh, human cadavers for dissection. Blue-gloved and white-coated, Richmond leads the way into a brightening lit room at the George Washington University Medical School. Metal gurneys are lined up in neat rows, each covered with a steel lid. I look at the human body and see how it's put together from a functional perspective and an evolutionary perspective. I see how it's different from other primates. Richmond lifts a steel cover. Underneath, a cadaver lies pale and heavy, the head shrouded in gauze. In death, these donated bodies are instruments of learning. Richmond lifts a flap of skin, the sole of the foot, with a metal probe. So here I've just pulled the skin back, and here you can see one of those characteristics that's really uniquely human, and that is the long tendon that runs from the heel forward underneath the skin all the way to the base of the toes. It's called the plantar aponeurosis. It's a flat, broad tendon, whitish and taut. Along with spring ligaments, it gives the foot its arch and its stiffness. Imagine thick rubber bands stretching from your toes to your heel. Step down and... They absorb energy going into your step. Then at the end of your step... They actually recoil, bounce back, and help propel your foot. We've also got short toes and a big toe that's in line with the other toes. These all make for better walking and running and surviving on the ground rather than in the trees. Now, the Kenyan prince did seem to show an arched foot, but Richmond also wants to know how the owners of these feet walked, their posture, their stride, even the angle of their leg bones. He wants to figure out what kind of movement makes that kind of footprint. So that when we have a footprint, we can work backwards and uh, reconstruct what the step steps were like in that individual, even at one and a half million years ago. <laughs> Hi. This is where graduate student Callista Bernal comes in. Richmond is filming her walking in sand and comparing her footprints to the Kenyan ones. I'm standing here while they're trying to put these uh, reflective markers on my joints. 
or search. She's in a GW lab getting ready to walk the walk. Can I wear a toe ring? No toe rings, just tights and a dozen or so reflective markers stuck to her hips, her legs, and her bare feet. She's going to walk through a sandbox. As she walks, cameras focused on those markers will produce a sort of stick figure computer animation of her gait, the turn of her ankles, the angle of her thighs, even the curl of her toes. Each footprint that I make, we're going to do 3D scans and try and figure out, um, based upon how I move and in what type of sediment I step in, how my footprints change. Pretty much as soon as he hits the start button, I start walking. Yep, let's do our experiments. That's close to when you're ready. Bernal strolls through the sand as casually as she can under the watchful eyes of several researchers and a row of cameras. Good. We got the full, actually, we got the full left and right. It's a better coverage than I thought it was. She leaves a nice set of prints in the sand. Richmond measures them with a laser and photographs them. This work is painstaking and a bit seat of the pants. Richmond's not sure what to look for. He's got a snapshot, the footprints. He hopes they'll provide clues to how walking evolved over millions of years, from primitive ancestors to us. The prints he found in Kenya were probably made by Homo erectus. Erectus emerged about 1.8 million years ago. They made tools, hunted, used fire, were taller, and had a bigger brain than their predecessors. They were starting to change their way of life, where they would go much farther, and a lot of people think it's mainly in, in terms of finding meat and meat became a new important part of the diet. Um, that also led eventually to us populating the world more. The foot ultimately is the thing that connects us to our planet. It gave early humans an advantage in an unforgiving world. They didn't have to swing to the next tree. They could just walk. They could run and hunt better. When the climate changed, they could migrate. And eventually they did, laying down their footprints everywhere. Christopher Joyce, NPR News.